as July 29th approaches, and, and I, I specifically say that because that's not the day I was attacked. That was the day I was found and rescued, and, and all of these amazing things took place uh, effective July 29th. And as that date uh, comes, I'm, I'm in an, uh, making an effort to show gratitude to everyone who stepped up and helped me, and you helped me beyond how I can ever say thank you. So thank you, Naomi. You're very welcome. Hi, and thank you for joining us tonight. Tonight, I have the amazing privilege of interviewing someone that is very special to me, someone that has supported me in so many ways over the past year, um, and that is my cousin, Naomi McBride. Hi, Naomi. Hi, Kimmy. <laughs> thank you for making the time to, to interview with me tonight, and I'm really glad that we can actually do it face-to-face -face now, which is, which is really wonderful, so thank you. You're welcome. Being double vaxxed is yeah. definitely beneficial. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just just as of Friday, so hopefully we're safe. So, <laughs> anyways, but uh, one of the one of the most beneficial initiatives that took place uh, for for to support me over the last year was the GoFundMe campaign, which you initiated. And I was wondering if you could share a little bit about what what motivated you to initiate that fund. It's an excellent question. Uh, I think out of frustration, to be honest. Um, when I got the phone call that this had happened and you were en route to the hospital, um, Jay, Jay called me and he was in a state of shock. I was visiting my father in Guelph and uh, it, it, was, it was devastating news. Um, I felt helpless. I'm sure every family member felt helpless. And I wanted to do something that was going to help you. Um, I got in my vehicle. I left my father. I got in my vehicle. I drove across the 401. And I was racking my brain. How are we going to get into the hospital? I wanted to see you. I wanted to hug you. Um, you know, Jay wanted to hug you. We knew that with COVID restrictions, we weren't going to be allowed. So I, I said to Jay, well, we'll just go down there anyway. And we'll stand outside the hospital. And we'll wait until the hospital staff <laughs> lets us in. We'll sneak in. We'll make it happen, whatever. Um, and then, you know, reality set in that that was that was not going to, the hospital staff is not going to let us in. Um, so, you know, we were up all night. We were worried sick. And in the morning, um, it dawned on me that I could set up a GoFundMe campaign. I had never uh, initiated a GoFundMe campaign before, but I felt that my frustration and my energy could be better served instead of pacing um, to create this campaign for you so that you would have some funds to come home to and get you back onto the road to recovery. And well, so I did. Well, <laughs> well I, I can honestly say that it's it's been... I, I don't even know where to begin to say thank you for that support because um, w without that GoFundMe, I'm, I'm honestly not quite sure where, where we'd be right right now. Um, one, one thing, you know, I discovered, and I mean, why would I even discover this, but, but that there really isn't a provision in place for victims of, of violent attacks um, in terms of financial support. Um, I did receive a, I don't know if it's called a grant, but I received $1,000 uh, from the government, which is something that goes to victims um, who suffer violence. Um, and, and while I appreciate that, that money um, it cost me $700 to get my driver's license back. So that $1,000, um, you know, basically was, was taken care yeah. of with, with that. So it's interesting how, you know, uh, God forbid it should, uh, a violent attack should happen to, to a woman, but um, if she doesn't have a savings or a support in, in place or some kind of, you know, access to some benefit, um, you know, there's, there's some, uh, rough roads <laughs> ahead, you know? So, so this fund has, has helped immensely and, and it's helped pay for a lot of therapy, which I wouldn't have been able to get with, without that. So I'm, I'm very much indebted to you for setting that up. And, and I, I noticed that, you know, not only did you initiate the fund, you, you were the one that, um, commented, uh, uh, return, returned the comments on, and all the messages uh, on the fund, because quite a few comments came through. How did you find the time to manage that? 
Uh, you just do. I think um, your adrenaline is just pumping. You are focused and, uh, well, you can't sleep. I mean, it's day by day, minute by minute, or minute by minute, day by day, mm-hmm. um, you know, praying for you to wake up and come home. Um, you're you're not going to sleep. So it, was, it, it wasn't that hard, to be honest. Um, and I wanted the donators to know that uh, you know, there was someone on the other end of that donation who was appreciating their efforts and and uh, valuing, uh, you know, the the fund, the ten dollars, the twenty five dollars, and more that uh, I was seeing and hearing, you know, their support. So uh, you just do. Well, that honestly means a lot, and I I obviously want to thank you for doing that too because you you were my voice when I didn't have a voice, um, because all of those donations, regardless of the amount, um, were really meaningful. And, and when, I, when I heard of the fund, I think it was about at least three weeks, three and a half weeks after I got to the hospital, because um, I had been taken out of ICU, put in a regular hospital room, and I think that's when I was told about it. And I, I, was, I was really shocked, to be honest. I was confused, like, wh- why is... Why did did why are people giving me money? Why it was just a really strange time in my life. I my I wasn't fully fully cognizant, so I appreciated it so much. But I was like, why why am I receiving so much love and support? You know. So and then I I learned you know going forward that that would just be the way this community was and the way people uh, from far and wide actually, because the GoFundMe was supported by people even beyond uh, my own community. So um, that uh, is something that I really appreciate that you you thanked everyone and you you were my voice at a time when I didn't didn't have a voice for that. You're very welcome. (laughs) You know, um, the, the, one of the questions I had was, you know the the fund was just i mean the the amount was just today even i'm i'm in disbelief over it and and i just wonder if if you have any takeaways personal takeaways like from whether it's running a campaign or or their support that was received are there any takeaways from that uh that's a really great question i think that a, a couple of takeaways that i had is that whippy is an amazing place to raise a family um where they're we're so fortunate to have such a great community um and it wasn't I, I may have initiated the campaign and I may have responded to some messages, but the community at large, I mean, they really connected with your story. Um, they wanted to show, you know, solidarity for your recovery and they wanted to show solidarity that in our in our community that this, this act of what happened is uh, unacceptable and we're not going to take it. Um, and that, you know, we're going to recover as a community from this as well. And I think people really, you know, they resonated with the fact that, you know, you're a mom, um, you you have a son in the community, you've been a, a longtime resident here in uh, Whitby and in Durham, that you uh, taught at a, the, the local uh, college, mm-hmm. that you um, taught salsa classes at the community center, that you taught salsa classes at the lo- local yoga center, you volunteered your time at the YMCA. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of people in our community who give back to the community like you do, and it's shocking to hear that one of our community members is has gone through this horrific crime, and uh, the community is saying, you know, we're going to show you support, we're going to stand behind you, and we're going to make sure that we're going to do whatever we can to see you come home to recover and to put this person, whoever you know, uh, away where they belong. So um, I believe it was really the the whippy. And that's my biggest takeaway is that I've been living here since the 80s. And as long as I've been living here, I've always felt that uh, whippy is a great place to live. And, uh, you know, and it just, it, it just reiterates that feeling, right? So we're all very lucky to to reside here. I agree. I agree. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do this gratitude series. Um, I wanted to, to highlight the beautiful community that we live in and say thank you to the leaders of the community um, who, you know, everyone that, that, that contributed to the GoFundMe, I'm, I'm, 
very thankful to every single person. And of course, I'm thankful to you for initiating it. So I've tried in this uh, gratitude series to say thank you to the leaders that initiated things that supported me. And through them, thank you to all the people that supported their efforts. So um, it, it really means a lot. And, and I, I definitely uh, knew, knew Whippy was a great place to live before, but now there's there's no question. <laughs> it's an incredibly supportive uh, community to be a part of. So, And, and another takeaway I got is um, we have some really fabulous town councillors. Um, there are uh, Liz Roy, Rhonda Stevens. Um, they really, I mean, I didn't know, I didn't know Rhonda before this and I was, I'm, I feel blessed to have met her. Um, she was she really supported me through this difficult time and helped navigate some of the some of the behind the scenes issues um and then i met melissa um i never would have met melissa melissa is fabulous uh she she offered her time to set up the meal train and she wow she yes. she knocked that right out of the park um <laughs> So, I mean, again, it, it goes back to, you know, living in a community where people really value family and uh, they value their community and they want to have this place be a great place for everyone to enjoy um, and to be able to walk at night and not have to think about, you know, what we have to think about. Um, yeah. You know, so, yeah, there are a lot of runners in our community who uh, they were shocked um, on uh, the Take Back the Walk event. There was a uh, an Ironman, a woman Ironman athlete who um, to up to the event who has trained solo for years, uh, who never never thought twice about you know going out at any time of the day to prepare for an Ironman event, um, and she's she's now put strategies in place so that she's not alone um and carrying oh. cell phones when you go out having pouches um you know the, like we safety first right so yeah. you don't think of those things in our community but they do happen um and the community at, in general is like well they may have this is this is an odd oddity too because this is, hasn't happened in well, I've been living here, like I said, since the 80s. It's never happened. So um, just the fact that the town just steps up yeah. and supports one of our own, you just you have to know that that is a, an amazing, great place to to be in for sure. Absolutely. And I know one of the one of the things that Hannah Elkington and I spoke about, the, the police officer that started to take back the walk, was the value of of having cameras on your on your garage or on the front of your house and and how that is supportive because it not only protects you and your family and house um, it protects people uh, passers-by because um, the camera foot footage that was gathered really helped me in my case and I'm, I'm very grateful to everyone who had a had a camera so even if you don't know anyone that needs your specific help or a donation or a meal or whatever, even just something as, as, um, passive, I guess you could say as having a camera is a way to, to help your community be a safe place to live. So if, if you can do that, please, I am advocating for that now because it really, really helped me. Something else you did, which, um, I don't even know if I'm allowed to mention, but I'm going to say thank you to you. As you introduced me to the 911 mm. operator who, mm. um, who, who managed everything uh, for my rescue. And that was an absolute privilege to, to meet her. So, so thank you for setting that up. And uh, in case I'm not supposed to say that, I'll just stop, <laughs> stop well, right there with that. It was my pleasure to do so, I'll yeah. tell you. Yes. Well, what a, what a remarkable individual. <laughs> um, I, I second that. I second that. Yeah, she she was an absolutely stunning uh, individual. Very very calm, and I I often wonder how someone manages a position like that. So she was she was uh, quite a quite a champ, quite a star. So it was really nice to meet her. So you've gotten involved in everything. You've you've got involved with Take Back the Walk. You, uh, like I said, introduced me to some key people. You were the uh, the the 
uh, mediator, go-between conduit, I'm not sure the word, between Melissa and and me setting up, setting up the meals. You were the person she spoke to. Um, you've just done everything possible to show support to to me over the past year and i'm i am incredibly grateful to you for that so so thank you for for that oh, you're very welcome and i would do it again in a heartbeat i know and then there's you know then there was penny the, who yes. uh, did the uh, uh the yoga um it was a virtual event where we she had some uh guest yogis come in and they did some chants and some healing prayers and uh, that was a wonderful event I know that up to that day I was holding on to so much uh, b bad bad feelings towards this what happened and going through that virtual yoga um, was that forever changing for me um, you let go of the anger and uh, I really appreciated that event um, and I believe that's where you actually taught some salsa classes was at her yoga studio so yes. um, she felt very deeply connected to you and uh, she it was a beautiful event um, and I'm grateful for that I without that night um, I'm not sure if I would have overcome my anger and my hatred for you know that guy right <laughs> which i <laughs> refuse to you know identify with or yeah. talk about so yeah, yeah. well Cause that's not that doesn't define us right no no it doesn't and i and it was interesting because you told me about the the event run by by penny and i i wasn't aware it's not like she she told me about it she didn't do it to get credit for herself she did it to help help mm -hmm. others and and in fact penny uh offered me some some uh, services when I came home uh, yoga services helping me to stretch and she just she just did it out of love mm -hmm. and didn't didn't expect anything in return and and I'm very thankful to her too so um, you just seem to know so many people in the community <laughs> and you know that there, there's a lesson in that you know so get involved with your community get yeah. to know people and I think when you live in when you live in one spot for a long time you get yeah, to know people you get to know right? people say hi to your neighbors <laughs> it right. won't hurt you right. <laughs> so right. so here's a here's a question if if someone's like oh go fund me maybe i could set up a campaign for someone would you have any advice like do's don't don't do's tips whatever yeah i think uh, GoFundMe has a whole tip sheet, um, and as I mentioned before, I had never set up a campaign before. Um, I, I I had no idea that it was going to take off the way that it did, um, and I think if you just follow the tips that GoFundMe outlines, you'll do pretty good. Um, in in our case, um, I believe it was a collective effort of the community. I I. You know, I just initiated it and I, you know, contacted a few people and asked to help, you know, asked them to help support the campaign in honor of you. And uh, of course, people jump at the chance. So asking, you know, people for help to spread the word of the campaign, I think is very beneficial. And you can email people um, and then you can put it on social media. And social media is a great tool at times. Um, and I definitely use social media to bring awareness to, you know, who you were and what you did in our community and, um, you know, and, and, and to really put the message out there that you're coming home and there's no doubt about that you're coming home and, you know, we need some funds for recovery. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, people, you know, they, they want to help you ask and, um, you, you receive. Yeah, it's so true. And, you know, I really like how you said that some companies, um, from the goods they sold, they, they forwarded mm. a portion of that to, to the GoFundMe. So I think there's, there's so many ideas out there, and that's another reason why I wanted to, to do this series, to, to give people ideas of how they can help. So even if you don't have a lot, you don't need to have a lot to make a difference in someone else's life. Just giving a, um, a little bit of your time and um, a, little, a little portion of something makes, makes a huge difference because it's made a huge difference in my life. And there were some local Whitby, Whitby businesses that were offering their services, cosmetic dentistry, physiotherapy. Yes 
therapy, um, you know, any any surgeries you may need. I, I would believe it would be cosmetic surgeries yes. um, that they were offering their services if and when you ever need to you know, to go down that road, they'd be here for you. There was uh, local restaurants that have, uh, you know, like you said earlier, they would a small donation from food that was purchased. Uh, they would get back to the GoFundMe. We had a few people knit you a couple of items. We yes. had, uh, I, I have the, mm -hmm. my, my, I, I took the pom pom off, mm -hmm. but I have the beautiful, beautiful hat and, and should I show the blanket? Mm -hmm. Most so definitely. I don't know if you can, see this this blanket but this what this came from a community member yeah michelle okay. reichman michelle reichman and michelle if you're watching this i slept with this every single day and night at rehab it never left my bed it was the only blanket i used so it uh it has a very special place in my heart. And, and now that I'm home, it has a special place in, in my bedroom, too. So <laughs> thank you for, for that. Because it's, it's really pretty, <laughs> It's very too. pretty. The colors are beautiful. Yes. They're bright and cheerful. Very just, bright. Just, just what we need, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just what we need. So, mm -hmm. so uh, honestly, Naomi, what can I say? You're, you're a superstar. You're I'm a superstar a superst supporter. It's, it's yes, amazing. I'm a superstar supporter. Superstar of you, Kimmy. supporter. <laughs> Thank you. So as as July 29th approaches, and and I I specifically say that because that's not the day I was attacked. That was the day I was found and rescued, and and all of these amazing things took place uh, effective July 29th. And as that date uh, comes, I'm I'm in an, uh, making an effort to show gratitude to everyone who stepped up and helped me and you helped me beyond how I can ever say thank you. So thank you, Naomi. You're very welcome.